Hello, my name is David Mars. You can find me on YouTube under the title of Fen Builder, unless you're watching this via YouTube, in which case you already have. This video is to highlight some of my own LEGO creations, which I had hoped to display at both the Ely Brick Show 2020 and at Brissingham Bricks. Hopefully I will be able to attend and exhibit my work at both shows in the future. Sadly, though with the measures put in place to contain the current global pandemic, these events were both cancelled. So, when Duncan Bridges, the organiser of the Ely Brick Show, offered me the opportunity to participate in a virtual Ely Brick Show for this year by contributing a video showcase of my builds, I jumped at the chance. My first LEGO build I would like to talk about is the Flying Saucer Calf. Built across two 48 by 48 base plates, I got the idea from watching a documentary about the Roswell, New Mexico UFO incident of 1948. The documentary highlighted how today the local population in Roswell capitalised on their infamous history by opening various stores, diners and even a hotel themed around alien visitation and the UFO phenomenon. This got me thinking about how I would design a small eating establishment that tied in with the same premise. The challenge was there to build my ideas in Lego, with the caveat that indeed extraterrestrials were paying a visit to the scene. The main building of the Flying Saucer Calf is a relatively simple square shaped structure. The domed roof of the building is designed to resemble a landed flying saucer whose alien occupant is enjoying an ice cream and a cup of tea. Of course, in reality, any extraterrestrial with a sweet tooth would have to visit the flying saucer calf, because as everybody knows, in space, no one can eat ice cream. The front of the building has a working sliding door, a payphone, and the letters UFO visible on the outer wall. A pair of wooden picnic benches provide an outside seating area for patrons of the calf. The right hand side of the building also has a sliding door and a double flying saucer mural depicted on the wall. The flying saucer calf sign down this side of the building is also topped by a flying saucer depiction. The sign uses 1x8 bricks with my idea being that as I attended more brick shows I could incorporate show specific printed bricks into the sign. Down the left hand side of the building is a further sliding door next to a wall mural of an alien face. A section of the original building is depicted as collapsed and some of society's less fortunate minifigures have decided to make these ruins home. If your kids need to burn off some energy send them out into the rocket garden play area to let off some steam. The idea for this area came to me after visiting the Kennedy Space Center where they literally do have a rocket garden. The tallest feature in the play area is a model rocket that is based on the Rocket Boy collectible minifigure. The other play items in the rocket garden are themed loosely on spaceships with a slide that incorporates a Lego classic space aesthetic, a rocket that resembles a space plane, and a swing influenced by the SpaceX Falcon Heavy launch vehicle. On the ridge behind the rocket garden play area, a pair of aliens have lost their way and decided to land their spacecraft and consult a map sign for directions. Aliens have often been depicted in popular culture as abducting cattle, and another group have landed their WASP rocket ship in the cow pen for this purpose. Although the cattle need some incentive to cooperate, and working with animals can present its own unique set of challenges. Aliens are also notorious for creating crop circles, and here we see a group using a variety of garden tools such as a lawnmower and strimmer in order to craft their latest masterpiece. The interior of the calf is easy to access. Simply slide open two side doors which allows you to push the roof up from the inside and remove it. 
In addition to customer seating, the interior has a classic jukebox, a video arcade machine, serving area and a pool table that uses lightsabers instead of pool cues. Book a table today for a dining experience that is out of this world. Next up is my rendition of a drive-in movie theatre. I never felt that the Flying Saucer Caf by itself occupied enough space to warrant a display table at a brick show, so I thought about what premise would suit it as an expansion. The whole B-movie genre of the 1950s, of which the drive-in theatre is synonymous, seemed to match quite well, so I set out designing my own small-scale establishment. With the exception of the hot dog stand, I designed all of the structures that the drive-in theatre hosts, including the toilet block, coffee booth, ticket kiosk, and projectionist booth. The buildings all have detailed interiors that can be accessed by removing the roof. In some cases, the interiors may be a little too detailed. As for what film my drive-in theatre is showing, well, the choice seemed pretty obvious. With the release of LEGO's Disney Train and Station, I felt inspired to try and build a functioning LEGO train mock and base it on an existing LEGO theme. Again, the LEGO movie provided me with that theme. And like any train, mine would require an engine. Being a childhood fan of the LEGO Classic Space Line, the idea of combining Classic Space and a train engine seemed viable and appealing. And if you look closely enough, you'll be able to notice all of the nods to Classic Space in the design. Benny drives the train from the driver's compartment, which is accessible from a rear facing door. My only regret here is that I didn't make the roof removable to ease access to the compartment. The train engine is powered by the LEGO powered up motor and controller. The powered up hub can be linked to the Bluetooth control via an opening hatch on the top of the train. Of course, if I'm going to have a train engine, then I need some rolling stock to go with it. So I have also designed and built a Cloud Cuckoo Land themed trolley car and a carriage loosely themed on the London Underground. Yes, I know that the London Underground doesn't feature in the Lego movie, but I love the look of underground trains and the fact that the Lego store in London has a replica scene from one made the connection close enough in my opinion. Whilst my current train arrangement only features a single motor, it runs quite well considering how heavy it is, and I have plans to expand it further in the future, with a club car loosely based on the Lego Batman movie film, which I have named the Bat Track Car. The Bat Track Car, a heavily modified variant of an existing Lego design, is currently awaiting parts to be delivered before I begin its construction. I've always been a fan of the Universal sci-fi series Battlestar Galactica, both in its original 1970s incarnation and Ronald E. Moore's more gritty modern interpretation. So building Lego versions of the sleek Viper fighters featured in both was always going to be on the cards at some stage for me. My Lego rendition of the classic 1970s Viper is heavily based on a photograph I found of somebody else's build online although I have taken some license in its design to make the model more rigid and durable. My Viper Mark V is also influenced by a photo I found online. Again, I made some modification to give the model strength and what I feel is a more accurate representation of the original fighter's colour scheme. My Viper Mark II is completely of my own design. Whilst it's not as accurate as some of the mock builds I have seen of this particular Viper, it does strike a good balance between aesthetic and durability, and the colour scheme is very close to the design that featured in the TV series. 
Finally, my Blackbird Stealth Viper is also my own design and does take some liberty with regards to the TV original. Lego Blackbird features switch operated spring loaded shooters in the engine pods that can fire up to four projectiles in volleys of two and a small cargo area behind the cockpit. I would like to thank Dunking for allowing me to participate in the Ely Virtual Brick Show 2020 and thank you for taking the time to watch this little video exhibition of my work so far. Hopefully, in future, I'll be able to display it at live Brick Show events and by then I'll have even more crazy builds to show off. If you're watching via YouTube, then please feel free to post any questions that you might have in the comments section. If you've watched this video as part of the Ely Virtual Brick Show, then please feel free to ask me in person as part of the event, technology permitting of course.